So now that we have the gonad, we need to see how those gonads produce their gametes. And we know that gametogenesis is a result of a process known as meiosis. And so let's take a look at how meiosis occurs. Meiosis, as you recall, is a two-cell division process. So on this slide, we see the first cell division in which a cell has gone through a division producing two cells. And then we see that those two cells each go through a second division to produce four cells. So let's discuss this two-cell division process, but we need to discuss it a few times. First, I want to discuss those similarities that exist between the male and female gametogenesis, those things that occur that are the same in males and females. And for the most part, what we're talking about there is what's happening in the nucleus. We'll then talk about it a second time and discuss some differences between male and female gametogenesis, and those differences will largely be what occurs in the cytoplasm. And then we will discuss it a third time to look at some differences with regard to the timing of when this process occurs in the male and the female. So let's start with the similarities. So here we have a cell known as a spermatogonia, or an oogonia, depending upon whether it's male or female. Now that cell type is a somatic cell. That's not a gamete, it's a somatic cell which goes through a cell division process of mitosis, just like any other uh, somatic cell. And as a result of mitosis, it uh, divides and produces more of itself. But then some of those daughter cells will enter the meiotic process and in, the, and in doing so, change their name to primary spermatocytes or primary oocytes. So once they become meiotically active, instead of mitotically active, they change their name to spermatocyte, primary spermatocyte or primary oocyte. Now, the first step in cell division within a nucleus, regardless of whether we're talking about mitotic or meiotic division, is that the DNA has to replicate itself. And so what we see as a representation of that here is we see a pair of chromosomes. Remember that there are 23 pairs of chromosomes in the, in the nucleus, so this represents one pair of chromosomes. And we see that each of those chromosomes has replicated itself. So instead of having a single-stranded chromosome, as we do here, we have a double-stranded chromosome. Those two strands, each strand is given the name chromatid, so there are two chromatids in this chromosome, and those chromatids are held together near their midpoint uh, by a structure known as a centromere. So now we have a pair of double-stranded chromosomes with twice as much DNA as we had originally because of that uh, synthesis of DNA. Because this um, somatic cell called the spermatogonia is a diploid cell, or referred to as 2N, when it has doubled its DNA, we now say it is 4N, or tetraploid. So if this is a diploid cell, we now have a tetraploid cell. But we still have 46 chromosomes. Here we had 46 chromosomes. We still have 46 chromosomes, but each chromosome has twice as much DNA represented by the double strands. So that's a tetraploid cell. That nucleus will then proceed through the first meiotic division, and in the process of doing that, those chromosomes, the pairs of chromosomes, will separate from one another. So one of each pair of chromosomes will end up in one nucleus, the other of the pair will end up in the other nucleus. So now each nucleus, instead of having 46 chromosomes, will have 23 chromosomes, because each chromosome has twice as much DNA as we started with, we now say that it is a diploid cell, or 2N. So we went from a 46-chromosome cell that was diploid to a 46-chromosome cell that was tetraploid to a 23-chromosome cell that is diploid. Those cells, as a result of that first cell division, are now called secondary spermatocytes or secondary oocytes and those cells will then enter the second meiotic division. And so here we see these, those secondary oocytes or secondary spermatocytes going, entering their second meiotic division. And what occurs in that second meiotic division now is that those chromatid 
chromatids. The centromere that's holding the chromatids together will split, allowing the chromatids to separate from one another. And so when the nucleus divides, each nucleus will have 23 chromosomes, but 23 single-stranded chromosomes instead of 23 double-stranded chromosomes. So here we are going from a 23-chromosome diploid cell to a 23-chromosome haploid cell, and that is the de definitive gamete. That will be the sperm, the nucleus of the sperm, or the nucleus of the ovum. So that process that we just described is identical in males and females.